Deep within the recesses of Cuyahoga National Park lies a forgotten little town called Boston, Ohio, or as it's also known, Helltown. What exactly happened in this deserted town? And have the hurts of the past created a haunting in present day? Tune in tonight to find out what is going on in Helltown, Ohio. What? Why? Oh, 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 no! <laughs> hey, everybody! Welcome to Paranormal Spirits, where we share a drink, we tell you a spooky story, and then we rip it apart because booze always shows the truth. And as always, we will be playing Emily's Drinking Game! Emily's Drinking Game! <laughs> Ooh! Yeah! Ooh, yeah! Where every time we screw up a word or phrase, we take a drink. So grab a drink, grab a snack if you'd like, and play along with us. I have an interesting one today for you, Caitlin. And I think you're going to like it because yeah. this is a true story. I love a true story. With like some paranormal either. accoutrement, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> fancy. It's a fancy true story. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Helltown, Ohio. Is that where you live? No. It officially is Boston, Ohio, which is a little confusing. It's not Boston, Massachusetts. It's Boston, Ohio. First settled in 1806, Boston is the oldest village in Summit County. The first mill was built in the early 1820s, and it kind of became this like, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would call it bustling, maybe just a level below bustling, whatever that would be. <laughs> a pseudo bustling town. Slightly busy. Like so bustling hot. adjacent. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Several years later, after the arrival of the like Ohio and Erie Canal, more people came to to Boston and maybe at that point it became bustling. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. It was bustling okay. at that point. Now over years, over the years, <laughs> over the years, not much changed in the town. Um, however, beginning in the late 1960s, um, there was this nationwide movement where people were concerned about the forest being destroyed, right? They were like, too much is being built. No, we need our trees. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yes. I speak for yeah. the trees, you know, I think it was known as the Lorax movement. So in 1974, in an effort to save the forest, President Gerald Ford signed some legislation that enabled the National Park Services to purchase land to be used to create parks. Now, shortly after that, on December 27th, 1974, hundreds of acres, including the land within the township of Boston, were officially designated as a national recreation area. So in other words, they were going to make it into a national park. Now, we've all heard of eminent domain, right? So that gives the government... Do you not know eminent domain? Who's we all? Because I'm not included in that in that group. <laughs> Brief summary of eminent domain, and sorry to any lawyers out there if I get this terribly wrong. It's basically something that was enacted somewhere in some sort of official paperwork that gives the government the ability to purchase your land kind of without your consent if they need it for something they can come in and say we're buying your house off you here's your money see you later so anyways that's what happened in the town of boston ohio now the residents were like they could try to buy a little bit of time by haggling over the price the government was willing to pay for me for them but <laughs> they tried to haggle buy them some time but eventually they were gonna have to move out and if you don't leave they will send in armed peoples to escort you out of your house. Now, I think you probably see where this is going. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about this yeah. as to why they were doing this. Like, why would they buy up an entire town for a national park? Right. Why? To save the trees. Right. When they're in but it's did a the, town. Did, was it necessary to include that town? You couldn't just go on the edge of the town and stop there. You needed, like, the, you know, however, I mean, it's not a huge town that were like, several hundred residents, like hundreds of residents. That's it. It's not like it was thousands right. of people. It was so, barely bustling. At this point, I think it was like, like below bustling. Low level like bustling. Like a slight rumbling. 
So why the government need this particular town? Like so much so that they're kicking everybody off their property, giving them a little bit of money and saying, go. It's weird. It is weird. So now there's a whole documentary about this and it's, it's a little strange. Like it's called, I think it's just called Helltown. Um, it's one of the shock docs, if you've seen any of those. And I think we watched it on Discovery Plus. It's weird. So Dave and I watched it and the entire time we were just kind of like, is this for real? Like the documentary, like the footage that they showed. So supposedly there were some teens that went in at night in 2016. So you can go to this town. So the town's still there. The town is still there. It's empty. You can go to the town because it's part of the national park. So there are like, as long as you stay within the national park limits, I think some of it might be slightly outside of the limits, but as long as you stay within the, the limits of the national park, it's a national park, you can go to it. So it's really weird. So people go and they get like, it's very eerie and spooky and there's some paranormal claims about it and whatever, and like definitely conspiracy theory. So there's this, this documentary and it's a little weird. So supposedly I haven't seen it and I have, to, cause you know, not much research done. There's this group of teens that snuck in and while they were there, one of them died. And they had video footage. They were streaming live to YouTube. Wait, no. Mm -hmm. Did they live stream the death? I think so. Stop it. So you see in the video that they show, now the question is, is this real? You see like antlers, like deer antlers, like a giant like set of antlers. And then it's like, but it like stands up on two legs and it looks like, like a deer man. I don't know what you would call it. It's really weird. So you see kind of this outline, right, of it coming at them. And then you hear screaming and like weird noises. Now, like I said, it looks really fake. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff about this. Supposedly when the town was first founded, this it was this reverend, I can't remember what religion he was, some sort of Christian religion. And they also had claims of this weird creature and they, they talked about it being a Wendigo because there was Native American legend around the area that described a Wendigo being there. And so that's what they're claiming this thing is, is, is a Wendigo. And so eventually, again, this is in the documentary and I haven't found anything to back this up in my massive research. The pastor and the residents started leaving offerings to this Wendigo and it was improving their crops. It was improving the weather. I mean, it's really weird. I'm really jealous because I wish that people would leave me offerings. But I just want every day for there to be somewhere where I can go and there's just like a plate of my favorite things. So it's <laughs> like offerings for me every day. And I just like stroll in there and I get my Oreos and pizza. Do to do, I'm walking in the room. Oh, it's a plate of cake. Oh boy, my offerings are here. Oh, and the, and the conspiracy theory that I kind of alluded to before, one thing people say is they, they think that there was there was something other than what the government was saying about a national park, which is why they evacuated the town. I know. Shocking. One of the theories is that there was a chemical spill and that's why they wanted to get everybody out so quickly, but they didn't yeah. want to tell people, right? Now, a lot of people will claim that there is no, like, no basis of... <laughs> Just totally forgot like the words they went whoosh, they went to go out of my head <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people will say there's there's no factual basis for this claim whatsoever however there actually is there actually was toxic stuff going on around there and i have the proof from the national park service themselves this is from the national park service as you can see at the very top of the page removing toxins at the not even gonna try it. Dump. The uh, Kredzki. The Kredzki. Kredz 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 That's what I thought too. Maybe it's Kredzki. Yeah. Let's go with that. I like it. So the Kredzki dump operated as a salvage yards and waste disposal factory in Boston Township, Ohio from 1948 to 1980. Received solid and hazardous waste from nearby cities, towns, and scores of companies. At the time, the dumps were largely unregulated. Toxic materials were buried in unlined pits and allowed to seep unchecked into the environment. So when the National Park Service bought this area, they acquired this land that the dump was on and they found this is actually really toxic. The responsible parties paid more than 50 million to remove the toxin and it, the work was finally completed in December of 2020. They even have pictures. Look, let me show you. 
some of these nasty pictures. Barrel leaking red sludge circa 1985. Doesn't that look nice and clean? Something coming out of this one. Don't mm -hmm. want to know. The residents of the town before they were evacuated, a lot of them complained of a sulfur smell, like this really pungent sulfur smell in the air, which led to a lot of the theories that there was a chemical spill, right? Which is valid. There are a lot of weird theories, legends, shall we call them, in Helltown. There's the cemetery legend. So the legend is that the cemetery is haunted by a ghost that sits on a bench and stares blankly into creation. The most boring ghost of all time. It's not even There's like a, a boo in sight. It's literally this. There's other people that claim that that pastor that I talked about before that was like doing the pagan offerings, yeah. he's buried there too. And other people claim that he haunts the grounds as well. I'll buy that more than some random bro sitting on a bench. There's another legend that the trees in the cemetery move. Part of the reason people say this one is that there's reportedly a lot of like satanic ritual, satanic activity that happens or continues to happen in this town. With stupid kids going in like, we're gonna contact the devil. The trees moving is the work of a satanic cult that caused the trees to move in order to hide their secrets. No. It's just yeah. a bunch of like teenage Satanists just digging up trees and like moving them in the middle of the night. It's not even Satanists, it's just landscapers who are like yeah. practicing. It's like landscaper boot camp in the right. middle of the night. The trees are moving. Is it windy? There's another legend that the cemetery con contains graves of a large number of children that were killed in a bus accident. Now this one kind of has a couple different variations. They were killed in a bus accident. They were slaughtered by like a ax murderer or something in the bus itself. So it was a bustling town. <laughs> You're good. There was a bus in this town and there was a family living in it. And what happened was something happened with their house and so they were living in this bus while their house was being fixed up. It's just the Partridge family. How is there a bus readily available for them to just move into? You can buy them, I guess. Where did it come from? Instead of a one horse town, it's a one bus town and this family just moved town. right in. So some family was living in it. Eventually the bus has been like towed away. But yeah, there was a lot of theories around the bus as well. Now what's really weird, and I, and I haven't quite figured this out in my in-depth research, is that there, even though the town is abandoned, there are a few people still left living there, or there were at one point in time. I know. There were reports that there were still some locals that just kind of like refused to leave. I don't know if they went back there. The government never did anything with it. That's the other weird thing about this town is they never did anything with it. The houses are still there. I think some of them like got demolished, but most of them are still there. And so it's possible people just like, and I'm going back to my house, you know? I don't know. I don't care about them chemicals. I'm going back to my house. So there's supposedly some weird locals that live there. And one person I was reading, he said he'd gone there to kind of look at the town, investigate the town. And he's done it a couple of times. And when he's been there at night, he's come back to his car and found weird looking people looking in his car, like in the windows. And the moment they see him, they take off. And so he's had that happen a couple of times. It's just somebody else who's ex adventuring and exploring yeah. and like, a car! <gasps> Is this a car from 1974? Even though it's a 2015 Nissan Rogue, you know? I don't know why my car is there, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's just you. It's just me. Hey, guys! So one of the legends is there's an abandoned house in the woods where one light always appears in the upstairs window. This is actually true. There is a house where one light is always on because it's a lodging house for young travelers and the light stays on because it admits guests 24 hours a day. So yeah, there is always a light on there. There's a couple others about the school bus, a serial killer or like variations, a serial killer, a band of serial killers, an escaped mental patient, several escaped mental patients and a group of Satanists or cult members, you know, all the usual suspects. <laughs> what genre of music does a band of serial killers play? I don't know what. It's not a joke. I was asking you. It was a oh, I don't know. I'm waiting for the punchline. <laughs> I just think the term "band of serial killers" is very funny. It's just a band of guys who's like da 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 da. <laughs> There's also these legends about a church that was used by the cult or cults or Satanists or a group of Satanists, a band of Satanists, whatever variation you feel like. One of the reasons behind the legends around this church is on the front as part of the like decorative accents. It looks kind of like there is an upside down cross. Actually, it looks like two. So there's one here 
and one here. I mean, it's just a poor decor choice. Yeah, it really was. Let's make it fancy. We'll put something down in between with a little yeah. flat leaf type situation on the bottom. It'll be great. That, of course, leads to like, oh, it's an evil group of devil worshippers in the church. One of the other legends is there's an evil man who lives in the basement and guards the church against outsiders. Isn't everybody an outsider at this point in time? Anytime right. somebody tries to go into that church, somebody's, you shall not pass. <laughs> it's just Gandalf. There's also a legend about a hearse. One of the legends is if you go into uh, past the road closed signs, you'll find a house that a creepy man or sometimes a creepy family lives in and the man drives a hearse and will chase you in it if you get too close. And sometimes he'll even try to run you down in his hearse. There's a little bit of truth to this legend. According to Randy Bergdorf, curator historian of the Peninsula Library and Historical Society, there was a Boston Township family that owned a hearse at one time, but they only used it for Halloween. Now this one, one of our personal favorites and a Paranormal Spirits old classic. No. The Highway to Hell. No. Yes. I can't yes. even sing that song ever again in my life. <laughs> I'm on a highway to hell. I did it. Some people will say, you know, like, there's some sort of, like, evil guy, man, waiting along the road to kill you. So sometimes it's a serial killer with an axe, and then the police can't get him. There's crazy people who hide in the woods and jump out. Mm -hmm. No, as with pretty much every highway to hell that we've covered, there's nothing. So they have, a, yet again, another kind of common thing, like a crybaby bridge story. Do you know these? Have you heard of these? Where you go and you park the car and you'll hear a baby crying, or you park the car and you leave the keys in there and you get out and, I don't know, walk around, do your thing, you come back and there's like handprints on your car or footprints. One of those. But you know what's interesting? I wonder if Ohio has one of the like higher rates of crybaby bridges because what I read was there are 18 bridges in Ohio that are claimed to be crybaby bridges. Are there just a higher number of bridges in the state of Ohio? I don't know. Math. Just a lot of crybabies. A lot of little weenies, little crybabies. <laughs> Yep. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the word weenies. Basically, those are kind of the majority of the urban legends so that surrounds this town. People do claim that they've gone there and captured a lot of paranormal activity. Well, um, I still have no idea what the hell happened there. I think it's the only... I would have to research this, Ugh. but I'm going to say that I think perhaps maybe is a good possibility that there's a slight chance this might be the only town evacuated for a national park. I don't know. The whole thing is just really weird, but I definitely am interested to know if that's like the only place that the government has ever kicked people out to be like, we want this now, ours, and then did nothing with it. Like, that's annoying. It is. Like, why would you do that? Why would you evacuate an entire town and then do nothing with it? Like, at the very yeah. least, tear down all the houses and plant some trees or something if you're going to make it into a park. Seriously. Wasteful. Like, mm. Wasteful. Don't, like, go all heal the world and then not actually heal the world. Maybe this was the government's way of saying, oh, you want more trees, huh? You want more trees? Let me show you what more trees is going to cost you. Get out of here, hippies of Helltown, Ohio. Boston Ohioans still have the Boston accent for whatever reason in my head. So they're just walking around. They're like, yo, kid, don't take my house, dude. I live here, guy. I'm going to freaking live in this bus, kid. And I'm going to freaking have my family in here because my house burned down. So now I got to live in this bus. And then they're going to call us a squadron of serial killers. But it's really not. It's just us kids over here in Ohio. Boston, Ohio. Okay. Well, that's the crappy story of Helltown, Boston, Ohio, where it's wicked piss of hate, kid. If you like what you saw, take the horns from your weird Wendigo head and like, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you don't like what you saw, neither did I. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time for more Drunken Adventures with two old tree-hugging whores. <laughs> Goodbye. Get out. When you have a moment. When you have a moment. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, that's why... When to go? <laughs> when to know? Sorry, I had to be. Big brains.
<laughs> We're gonna be like this. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Legit. Delete why. that. Delete that. <laughs> it was like. <sighs> <laughs> I kind of wish I got electrocuted, though. It would have been fun. What's Please wrong go. with me? Am I crooked? <laughs> okay. Don't dingle your dangle around. <laughs> it's my life motto. You go ahead and dangle that dingle. I'm going to dangle this dingle. I don't care what my mama says. <laughs> I have an itch in a really weird spot. That's what happens when you dangle your dingle. Oh, it's just dangling. You. E <laughs> that's disgusting and i know it's gonna make it into some blooper somewhere but there it is yeah also, no. way too animated it's like a muppets like <laughs> hey everybody hi, hi everybody hi. <laughs> welcome to paranormal spirits it could be a real shit show <laughs>